Hello everybody, this is Adam here with The Game Machine, bringing you a new video. So last week I didn't really get to do my press conference videos due to some technical issues with my internet, and so I didn't really have a lot to say about the press conferences, so I figured instead of doing that, I'll just share some of my favorite games from the show and games that looked interesting to me. Right now you're seeing footage of Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. The story demo is out now for PS4 and Xbox One, so if you want to check out the game, Good way to do it, it's completely free. So we'll start off with this game. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. This game looks like it's going to play really, really well. And from playing the demo, like I'm enjoying it, but I'm still trying to learn combos with characters and how the system works. So I'm still trying to get used to it. And it's really hard in the story demo because you're not fighting like a character that has infinite health or anything. You're fighting basically just minions and, you know, they run out of health. So it's really hard to practice in the demo, but... There's a lot of stuff going on. I guess I'm going to talk about the demo a little bit. And you get to play as several different characters. But they also announced some new characters during the show, such as Thanos, Zero. Uh, I want, did they announce? No, I don't think they announced Rocket Raccoon. I think he was already there. And I can't remember the other cast of characters they announced. But they announced some brand new characters into the mix. So it's going to be really cool to see those characters in the game for sure and they even had a story teaser trailer and stuff where it looks like x and zero are going to face off which of course anytime x and zero face off is just a fanboy moment for anybody who's a big fan of the big man x series especially like me anytime those two clash it's epic Reminds me of the battle from Mega Man X5, which was fantastic. It's probably one of the only few things I liked about X5 was that moment. Um, Next, we're going to move into Anthem. Anthem, we don't know a whole lot about yet, except that you are in this Star Wars-like universe. At least it looks like kind of like a Star Wars universe to me, with the giant thing that looked like one of those giant walkers. I'm not a big Star Wars fan, so I don't know what they're called, but the giant walker things someone will probably correct me and scream at me like you don't know star wars like yeah that's true i don't know star wars but anyways it had that and there's this guy that comes up to you and he's all like i made a mistake can you fix it for me and so you gotta you know unfuck up what this guy fucked up and you get to pilot in these like exosuits uh these mechanical suits and you get to go explore this giant vast world which is like filled with vegetation and monsters and it looked really cool and you had a jet pack you were flying around in you can even go underwater and and fly around and stuff which is really cool it gives you looks like it gives you a lot of options for mobility which is really neat i love games with mobility any action game that has a lot of mobility and stuff to it really really gets to me i like i hate really slow and methodical shooters like i love stuff that's like really fast paced even though i'm not good at them um it looks like it's going to be a really fun game uh so far um one of my favorites from the show, probably my favorite from the show, I would say, would be Dragon Ball Fighters Z. Fighter, Dragon Ball Fighters. I can't say Fighter Z because it's not Fighter Z. It's Dragon Ball Fighters with a Z at the end. And this is made by one of my favorite game developers, Arc System Works, and Namco Bandai teamed up with them to make a three versus three Dragon Ball Z. Maybe, hopefully, super characters will be in it too fighting game it looks freaking incredible it's got a little bit of marvel versus capcom a little bit of guilty gear to it but it's its own thing and it just looks incredible seeing some expert people get their hands on it and play it looks fantastic and amazing you had six characters that they showed off uh goku gohan vegeta cell frieza and majin buu and so each of those characters play uniquely, like Majin Buu has a signature, turn you into a cookie move. Uh, he he can even throw part of his belly at people. Goku has his instant transmission Kamehameha move. And like it really represents the characters really well. Even destructible environments where you can knock people into buildings, you can da damage the background and foreground around you. Like, when you're, like, fighting on the ground and stuff, the ground beneath you tears up. It's really neat. And even, like, on the Planet Namek stage, if someone does a really powerful super attack, it basically annihilates just about the whole planet, and the planet's about to explode. Kind of like in that episode of Dragon Ball Z, where 
Frieza uses this big powerful attack and nearly destroys the entire planet. So that game's going to be fun. I'm very interested in it. Next one um, is an arena-based fighter, Dissidia Final Fantasy NT. I loved Dissidia on the PSP. I loved both versions of the game. Like the first Dissidia, I put in so many hours, and I got my character to level Cloud to level 99, which I don't really do in a lot of those games. But because of the fact it's just like it was such a simple system, and like the fighting was really addictive like it was just really easy to grind and level up and i just had a blast with it um and this one looks to be really interesting it's a 3v3 it's actually being developed by team ninja who have done the dead or alive series so i don't know if they've done a lot of arena fires before but this will be very interesting looking at the gameplay and stuff this has been arcades in japan for a while now we're finally getting our chance to get a hands-on approach so it's going to be really incredible to see where they take it it's also a 3v3 fighting game but you can have up to six people so you're not controlling the other characters it's either cpu controlled or it's going to be you know you know, three other, two other people on your team, plus three other people that you're going to be fighting against, which is really cool. And it adds a different dynamic, uh, to fighting games where you can now communicate with like people and like set up like strategies and stuff. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, another one I'm excited about, I didn't look into too much coverage of it. I just loved the Danganronpa series, Danganronpa V3 Killing Harmony. Curious to see what that's all about. And, I really loved 1 and 2, and I really got addicted to them. I would play late at night to the point to where I'm like, I really need to go to bed because i got to work tomorrow. And I would sit up to like 3 a.m. and then have to get up early the next day feeling like crap. So this one may be one of those things that causes me sleep deprivation. Now, let's go into some more Western-like titles. Far Cry 5. I really loved Far Cry 3. Didn't finish it. Loved Far Cry 4. Didn't finish it. But I had a lot of fun just playing and dicking around with those games. Maybe this will be the first Far Cry I finished, or I'll just, like, play it and dick around in the sandbox-type world. But you're following religious cultists, which I was a little worried at first. It was, like, anti-religious message, but it's not. It's basically anti-cult message and stuff and i don't really and as a christian i don't really consider those people christians i consider them extremists and just horrible people and you know the thing with this game that's really interesting is like you know you've got people that you can recruit on your team and help you fight against the militia that has taken over the entire town and you can also like have things like a dog you can have a dog that you can summon to you know attack enemies and stuff like that you can have a guy call in air raids because he has like a you know a helicopter with a machine gun attached to it so there's a lot of different things you can do and i heard that the more people you recruit the more the militia pull pushes back so that's going to be a very interesting dynamic another one that i'm really excited about which i love the first wolfenstein not the very first i haven't played it but the very first wolfenstein on xbox one that game was incredible you could do a will to anything it's my kind of shooter it is basically just go nuts have fun and shoot everything i really like doom for that too because it was just a no nonsense here's a gun go shoot stuff don't think about it. And it was really fast paced. Wolfenstein looks like it's going to be that kind of game too. It's going to be a little bit more trippy. Like if you looked at the trailers, like there was a lot, of, I'm not going to go into it. You need to watch the trailer just to see it. There was a lot of trippy stuff in that trailer, but it looked like it was going to be like a really good slobber knocker of a good time. And just so much, so much carnage that you get to cause. It's going to be great. And lastly, I'm going to talk a little bit about this. I only watched the trailer once for it, but Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which I haven't finished the first one, but I'm going to work as hard as I can to find some time, which, you know, that game does not respect your time like Persona 5, um, to play more of uh, Xenoblade Chronicles, because Xenoblade Chronicles 2 looks really interesting. It doesn't look like it takes place in the same way, so I don't think I need to finish the first one in order to play this. But it does actually uh, go into, you know, this character. He has a blade. It's kind of like the Monado, but not really. And they're trying to get to this, like, mystic forest that's, like, high above the... I think it was a forest anyway. Um, could be wrong. <laughs> but they were trying to get to this place, and there's all these people trying to stop them. And you're with this girl who 
I don't know if she is your sword or she, because she doesn't turn into a sword, but she gives you a sword and it's like a part of her. But the only combat we've seen is just him and her together in combat. So I don't know if you recruit other party members like other Xenoblade games. Uh, other Xenoblade games, yeah. Well, you kind of do in Xenoblade X, which I haven't even opened that game. <laughs> Sad to say, but I don't even have my Wii U hooked up, so I'll have to play that someday at some point. But yeah, I mean, all these games look good. There were tons of more great games out there, but these are the ones I wanted to highlight because these are the ones that looked really awesome to me. So tell me, guys. Oh, and Mario Odyssey looks good, too. I forgot to mention that, but yeah, Mario Odyssey. Mwah. So, guys, tell me, what did you think about the C3? Did you find anything that you liked? I thought the C3 was a little bit underwhelming, but it did have some good stuff. So, yeah, let me know in the comments below what you thought. So, done rambling here. Thank you for watching. Until next time, game on.